Welcome to the online worship of Fort Hill United Methodist Church. Today is December 6th. As we worship today, we do so on the second Sunday of Advent. And as we worship today, I invite you to uh, find a liturgy that you'll find attached to the method by which you're observing worship today. Today we, re we celebrate the love feast, a Moravian tradition, as we remember God's love shared with us through Jesus. As we worship today, I also would invite you to be a part of our in-person worship at 10.30 a.m. each Sunday morning. Let us worship the God of our salvation. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. reading today is from Luke, the first chapter, 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favorite one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. The angel Gabriel brought unexpected news to Mary. God was entrusting the life of God's son to her care. It was a perplexing message that exceeded the possibilities of Mary's life as Gabriel told Mary about the son of the Most High, the Messiah, who was going to reign over the house of Jacob forever. In faith, Mary responded to this unexpected news of God's Messiah by saying, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Today, we light the second candle of the Advent wreath as we seek to trust in God. Like Mary, we seek to be faithful servants of God. Let us pray. O oh God, grant that we may be open to hearing your message of our, for our lives. May we respond in faith even when you call us to possibilities that are beyond the expectations of our lives. Through Jesus the Messiah. Amen.
Throughout the biblical journey of faith, the sound of God's voice is heard. The Bible begins with the sound of God's voice being heard in, in the first chapter of Genesis, the third verse, as God says, let there be light. Throughout the biblical journey, the sound of God's voice is heard. It's heard in the 12th chapter of Genesis as Abraham and Sarah become the parents of faith. It's heard in the third chapter of Exodus as God calls Moses from a burning, from a burning bush to go and free God's people from the slavery of Egypt. It's heard in the first chapter of Luke as the angel Gabriel tells Mary that she will bear a child, the Son of God. Throughout the Bible, the sound of God's voice is heard. Today, we have two scripture lessons for the sound of God's voice is heard. The first is found in the book of the prophet Isaiah. This, the setting for this scripture is that the people of Judah have been in captivity in Babylon for 70 years. It was a time known as the Babylonian exile or the Babylonian captivity. And the reason they were in exile and in captivity was because they had grown deaf to the sound of God's voice. They had broken the first two commandments of having other gods before the God of Israel and of making graven images. As a result of their deafness and their inability to hear God's voice, God has sent the Babylonians and into their midst and they had conquered Judah. The Babylonians had conquered Judah. And as a result of this, Jerusalem, the capital, was raised. The temple, the first temple built by Solomon, was destroyed. And leaders of Judah were taken into captivity. But now the captivity was coming to an end. And God's voice was being heard in the 40th chapter of Isaiah, the first four verses. Speak comfort. O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her time, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. The second scripture for today tells of a time when God's voice was heard through John the Baptist as John prepared the way for Jesus. As John is in the wilderness, he is preparing a way for the Lord making straight in the desert a highway for the advent of Jesus. I invite you to hear this reading from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The sound of God's voice is heard throughout the Bible. It is a holy voice that continues to be heard in our lives as we live in the faith of the Bible, as we live with faith in God's voice being heard in our lives. Kim is the name of a transitional specialist in the Virginia Correctional Center. 
Kim tells about God's voice being heard in that correctional center and of how we are a part of the ongoing biblical journey of faith through our lives. Kim tells of the joy of a father who was a prisoner in the center. As the father came and shared with him the news of the birth of his son, it was a time of rejoicing with this prisoner. There was even a greater time of rejoicing two weeks later when the mother, along with her parents, came to visit the prisoner, bringing with them the newborn child, two weeks old at that time. The child bore the father's name. Kim reports that it was a time of wonder, particularly that evening after the mother and child and parents had left, that the prisoners recounted the joy of seeing a newborn. Well, the joy turned to sorrow shortly thereafter when the prisoner received news that his newborn son, the child who bore his name, had died from sudden death, sudden death infant syndrome. It was inconsolable sorrow that the father encountered. Kim reports that you get to hear his sobs throughout the cell block. The father's sorrow was compounded by his belief that God had taken his son as the cost of the crimes that the father had committed. Kim said that no matter what he said to the father, it didn't work. The usual platitudes and words of comfort seemed so hollow and shallow. Well, the day for the child's funeral was approaching and the pain was compounded even more as the father was told that he would not be given permission to attend his son's funeral. On the evening before the funeral, Kim reports that as this prisoner was in the child line, a giant hulk of a man, as Kim describes him, a fellow prisoner, came up, put his arm around him and hugged the prisoner and said to the prisoner these words, I don't know what happened, but I do know that God did not kill your baby because you screwed up. I know that God loves you and is crying for you right now. Tomorrow during that funeral, instead of recreation, I'm going to stay in my cell and be quiet and thank God that you got to see and hold your baby. Maybe you ought to do the same. Kim reported that the next day at 2 o'clock p.m., Instead of recreation, a large group of people kept silent in awe and respect for the journey of faith, the journey of life, the journey of death, and the sound of God's voice that is heard throughout eternity. The story of God's voice being heard it's the story of biblical faith. And it's the sound of God's voice being heard in different times, places, and circumstances. It is the sound of God's voice still being heard today. It is the story of our faith. As we hear the sound of God speaking to us today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we celebrate the love feast today, a Moravian tradition. And I invite you, uh, if you have water or bread, to pause uh, your viewing at this time and to go get water and bread so that we might share together. In the Moravian tradition, that is called passing the bread. And we remember 
that as we pass bread to one another, as we receive the gift of bread, that Jesus is the living bread of life. And that is through Jesus, we hear God's voice being spoken in our lives. I invite you to share the gift of bread at this time. We also share through the circulation of the loving cup, a remembrance of God's gift of life and of how Jesus is the living water, the gift of God's voice. I invite us to share together in drinking and remembering the living water of God in our lives. Thanks be to God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, amen. I invite us to join together in a time of prayer. And as we pray this day, I would invite us to listen for God speaking to us as we share our voice together. Let us pray. Oh God, on this second Sunday in Advent, we thank you for your voice that is heard in our lives. We thank you for Jesus, your voice, your word become flesh. We ask God that as we join together, that we might listen for the sound of your voice as we share the sound of your voice through our lives. We pray this day for your world, that the world might hear the sound of your love. We pray for your church, that the church might be the voice of your love. We pray for this church, Fort Hill United Methodist Church, that we might be the voice of your love. And grant God that as your voice is heard, that we might speak your comfort this day to those who suffer from illness, particularly the COVID-19, for those who give care, for those who share protection. We ask, O oh God, that as we continue throughout this journey of Advent, that we might know what it means to comfort your people and what it means to live in your comfort for our lives through the love of Jesus in whose name we pray. Amen. Friends, the voice of God is heard throughout the biblical journey of faith. It is heard in our lives as we live in that journey. May God bless us as we share the sound of God's voice and as we listen in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen.
Friends, as we end worship today, let us remember that we go forth to share the sound of God's voice in the days ahead. May God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen.